We are knee deep in Season of Plunder, and now that I'm done focusing on the King's Fall Raid, Day 1 Contest Mode Top 700 baby, what what? <clears throat> now I can get back to focusing on what I really care about, weapons. There's a whole bunch of new weapons and new weapon perks out this season. Enough to the point where I wanted to do a personal ranking of which ones I really want to get and why. I should mention by the way, today's video is sponsored by Destiny 2, Season of Plunder out now featuring the all new beautiful King's Fall Raid. Fight that big winged menace at the back of the room and get some excellent loot while doing so. Learn more by clicking the link in the video description and thank you Bungie. Alright, moving on to weapons, I really wanted my inventory for either PvE or PvP and why. I've got three tiers today that we're going to go over. Tier 3 are weapons that I want, but I'll grind them out after I've gotten what I want from the above tiers. They'll be fun to have for sure, and I can't wait to experiment with them, but they might have competition from other strong weapons in the D2 loot pool, or maybe I already have a similar god roll. Next we have Tier 2. These are weapons that I really want. They bring a lot of uniqueness to the table and they either fill a rare role in the sandbox at large or they fill a purpose that I need in my inventory and don't yet have. Then there's tier one. These are the weapons that for one reason or another I need. I'm talking about I am planning on spending an unreasonable amount of time grinding for these weapons one way or another. Each of them serve an exceptional purpose and they will be mine, hell or high water. If there's a weapon I don't cover from the new season today, well, not everyone wants to sit through a two hour video. But you can go ahead and add that to hidden tier four, meaning, hey, I'll take it for sure. But tiers three, two and one are where I'm going to be spending the majority of my god roll hunting time. Kicking off tier three, we have the no reprieve shotgun. Dig the design, by the way. It looks like a freaking fallen crafted blunderbuss. The perks and the numbers, though, might interest you a little bit more. Unlike some weapons on today's list, no reprieve can pop off in both PvP and PvE. PvP first. Ever since the spread shotgun nerf, slug shotguns are a bit more consistent to me in PvP. Reprieve can also roll with reliable PvP perks like Steady Hands, Surplus, and Snapshot in Column 4. I should also mention it comes with the brand new origin trait, Right Hook. Dealing melee damage gives improved target acquisition and range for a short period of time. Hell to the yeah, two things any slug shotgun user would be happy to get for free. On the PvE side, Reprieve can drop with both Triple Tap and Focused Fury. Remember that slug shotties do good damage in PvE, and with Focus Fury activated, that's a free 20% damage buff for 11 seconds. Nothing to sneeze at. Oh, and did I mention that the Reprieve is craftable, by the way? No crossing your fingers for a good roll. Complete the weapon pattern and make whatever version you want. Next in Tier 3, we have another PvP weapon, the Mindbender's Ambition, Adept version. Yeah, you heard that right. Mindbender is back and it has a shiny new Adept version. As I mentioned, I'm currently digging Slug Shotties a tad better than Spread Shotties at the moment, but I mean, come on, it's Mindbender. IMO, aggressive frame shotguns are still the best of the spread shotgun family, and Mindbender has good numbers on paper. While there's no quick draw available in the loot pool, we do have bootleg quick draw, aka threat detector in column three. Only works up close, but hey, it's a shotgun, so yeah, that'll do just fine. We've also got well-rounded in column three, better stability, handling, and range just for throwing a nade or landing a melee. Fragile focus can also fight the effect of damage drop-off, provided you get the drop on the enemy. The thing I'm looking forward to the most is the fact that because it's adept, we have the ability to slap adept mods on that bad boy. Adept handling, adept range, and adept Icarus grip are all strong contenders for me. All right, already moving on to tier two. There's a lot more to talk about here and kicking things off, we have the Whistler's Whim. Gonna tell you, this one looks wild. Didn't think we would ever be looking at a Trials of Osiris bow. Now I know the bow is of the lightweight frame family, which hasn't ever really been very popular, but keep in mind that those bows got a good buff going into season 18. They have faster draw time now, and you can hold the perfect draw window for a tad longer than you could before. The whim looks absolutely filthy for PvP and brings a lot of unique factors to the table. For example, you might notice that it's literally the only bow in the game capable of rolling kill clip. Now, I've taken a look at the numbers based on other lightweight bow damage, and while it won't be able to flat out insta kill with kill clip activated, keep in mind that perks like kill clip stack with effects like radiant or an empowering rift. With Kill Clip activated and a Radiant buff or an Empowering Warlock well, Whistler's Whim should one-hit kill with a headshot arrow in PvP. Like I told you, filthy. If you're looking for something more traditional, Whim has a ton of other perks that should all work great. Moving Target, Rangefinder, Opening Shot, Archer's Tempo, Adrenaline Junkie, Swashbuckler, and Successful Warmup. We've also got the brand new Gut Shot Straight, which cuts target acquisition in favor of more body shot damage. Gut Shot provides an extra 20% damage on precision weapons 
which means that even if you whiff the headshot, Wim will still be great for team shooting people in PvP. Next up, Allied Demand, aka the new Iron Banner sidearm. It's back and it's got a whole new perk pool. I've checked the numbers and with a perfect god roll drop, this beast has the potential to reach 89 range. That's kind of insane and I really want to grind for that roll. Now with a base default of 12, the demand can only reach a total zoom of about 13 if equipped with Rangefinder, one short of the king of all sidearms, Drang. But the good news is that Drang is an energy weapon and allied demand is kinetic. TLDR, we're pretty much looking at Drang's younger kinetic brother and I'm 100% okay with that. It means I can pair it together with my favorite sniper in the game, the occluded finality. Oddly enough, also an iron banner weapon. But I digress. If you don't want to go all in on range, allied demand has other great options too, including rapid hit, gut shot straight, frenzy for PVE, eye of the storm, and multi kill clip. Even though it would cut down my beloved range a little bit, a multi kill clip allied demand sounds like it would shred in PVP and you better believe I'll be farming banner for both roles. Next up, Blood Feud, aka the new season of Plunder SMG. I'd probably want to grind it out just for how great the design is alone, but thankfully it also has good perks available and the hot new origin trait right hook. If I think about weapons that want better target acquisition and range, range for a short window of time, SMGs are right at the top of the list. The fact that you can pair it together with Swashbuckler, very fitting for a pirate themed weapon by the way, icing on the cake. With Swash and Right Hook together, you could get a melee kill and then have all the following, more range, more aim assist, and a 33% damage buff on your gun. With that combo, you can melt people in PvP at close to mid range. Or you could go for Well Rounded, which also pairs well. Well Rounded, like Right Hook, will trigger on landing a melee alone, not necessarily getting a melee kill. Then you would get a double buff to range, a flat buff to aim assist, stability, and handling. Pair together with the all new Pugilist perk to have a complete melee goblin mode weapon for PvP. Quick reminder that the new Arc 3.0 weapon melee, Lightning surge is dummy easy to use and very effective. Almost seems like this weapon was made for that class and you better believe me I'll be in PvP making it happen with that pairing. Best part about the blood feud is that like all season of plunder weapons it is craftable. Complete those patterns and make whatever you want. Next up the yesteryear aka the all new gambit pulse rifle. Now that the run and gun gambit origin trait has been updated to be effective outside of gambit all weapons with that perk have gone up in my book. I really like the idea of a pulse rifle that makes you move quicker for free on getting a kill. And hey, if you find that origin trait isn't for you, the backup is S tier without question. Suros Synergy, aka the trait that gives you better flinch reduction after just reloading your weapon, kill or no kill. On top of that, Yesteryear just has a lot of good perks available. While that does mean you probably need spicy RNG to get the roll that you want, remember if you reset your gambit rank, your weapons will drop with additional perks, so better shot at getting what you want. Perpetual Motion in Column 3 is very appealing to me and probably what I'll aim for if I can. In column four, you have a lot that's good. If you want a perk that's going to be great for 1v1 dueling and PvP, it's got to be Eye of the Storm. Or you could go with Gut Shot Straight to ensure that even if you land a body shot that kicks up into the head, you're still doing solid damage overall. Of course, it's really hard to turn a blind eye to all the great damage perks available. Multi-Kill Clip, Rampage, Focused Fury, and if you're feeling kind of wild, Golden Tricorn are all available. Thinking of Golden Tricorn activating the 50% damage buff for 10 seconds in PvP is borderline horrifying, but oh so enticing. And let's not forget, there's also Desperado, which yeah, I'll probably need a roll of that too. Catch me out in Gambit, unironically, in Season of Plunder. Moving on, the Inquisitor Slug Shotgun, another new drop in the Trials Loot Pool. If you're accurate in PvP, Slug Shotguns are going to take you far in the current meta. Fortunately for the Inquisitor, it looks like it could also do really well in PvE. Subsistence in Column 3 for Trash Shredding, or Fourth Times the Charm for pumping a lot of damage into bigger, badder enemies. You've also got Golden Tricorn, which again, when activated, could just murder a champion in the blink of an eye with that extra damage output. On the PvP side, so much good stuff on the table. Steady Hands gives you more handling, which I always appreciate on a shotgun. However, you've also got Perpetual Motion for extra unflinching, because remember, more stability now equals better unflinching, but also Tunnel Vision, better ADS speed, and target acquisition on a kill. Inquisitor also happens to be the only slug shotgun in the game capable 
capable of rolling fragile focus. If you're charging down a target who hasn't noticed you yet or is otherwise distracted, fragile focus can help you put them down from further away. Or if you want a more traditional perk, opening shot is also there, which is literally never a bad pick for a shotgun. While harmony is on the table, it won't be able to one hit kill on the body on its own. Keywords on its own, hint, hint, paired together with other damage buffs though, and We'll see what happens. Golden Tricorn, as mentioned, is there for the bold in PvP. As the Inquisitor is an arc weapon, there's a good shot you'll be able to kick that damage up to 50% with an arc melee kill, considering every class in the game has reasonable punching power on arc. I know most people will probably right away go mentally to Titan Shoulder Charge, but remember, Warlocks have the all new Lightning Surge ability, which, believe it or not, I've already made two videos on. When Inquisitor is the Flawless Trials loot, I will be going in all weekend long, believe it. Our final gun in tier 2 is the Doom of Chelchis, aka the King's Fall Scout Rifle. By the way, big shout out to my followers on Twitter who helped crowdsource all the raid weapon perk data by sharing their roles. Follow me there for arguments about things that don't matter at all. The Doom Scout Rifle has a lot of good perk combos, and the more I look at all the raid weapons, more on that later, the more I'm learning how many of them break the traditional rules of what weapons in D2 can roll with. Doom can roll with Vorpal Weapon in Column 3, and if you don't know why that's rare, Rare, it's very uncommon in D2 for a weapon to have an extra damage dealing perk in column 3 and column 4 at the same time. Because Doom can get Vorpal in column 3, that can be paired together with one of three other extra damage dealing perks in column 4. Focused Fury, One for All, or even Frenzy. The damage output on that sucker in PvE is going to be wild. And if you want to get even crazier, Doom, I'm pretty sure, is the only weapon currently in the game capable of rolling both Firefly and Dragonfly at the same time. Rock that if you're feeling like a pyro who wants to blow up the entire room in one go. It also has the oh-so-fun combination of Stats for All and One for All, and if you want to bring it into PvP, you've got both Explosive Payload and Eye of the Storm. This gun can pretty much do everything. I'm not really huge on scouts in PvP, but really getting a good rolled Doom is definitely something I want done during Season 18. All right, now we're on to Tier 1. Kicking off that list of my most wanted is the Defiance of Yasmin, aka the King's Fall Raid Sniper Rifle. And while you can definitely take it into PvE if you wish, I want this bad boy for Crucible. It's got a 40 zoom scope, which usually most PvP sniper mains prefer a sniper with a low zoom scope. It's also got shockingly good aim assist, 68, definitely in the higher tier of base sniper AA. You know what the defiance of Yasmin is? It's a kinetic version of the beloved. So if you were ever annoyed that you couldn't pair together a combination like palindrome and beloved, guess what? Palindrome should pair great with defiance of Yasmin. Defiance also has a ton of great perks you'd expect to be on a sniper. Snapshot and no distractions in column three and opening shot and moving target target in column 4. That means Defiance can roll the combo of Snapshot opening target, which Beloved literally is incapable of rolling. And of course, Defiance being a raid weapon and all, that means it is craftable. Provided you do enough raiding, craft what you want, and enjoy your top tier, perfectly crafted god roll PvP sniper. Next, Pardon Our Dust, the Grenade Launcher. I know, it's not a new Season 18 weapon per se. Sue me. It's on my list today because now in Season of Plunder, Dare's weapons are all craftable. Meaning that once you unlock the weapon pattern, you can craft, fully craft, a kinetic grenade launcher with auto-loading and blinding grenades. God damn, I am so happy that I can do that. I already have a Truth Teller and Empty Vessel with this sacred combo, but nothing yet in the kinetic department. That combo is Omega Chad tier in PvE, and I will be crafting one without hesitation when I can. Next up, the Taipan 4FR Linear Fusion. Fusion rifle. I'm willing to bet a large amount of money that there are a bunch of day one raid teams out there who kind of wished that they went to the Enclave now and did the quest to craft this linear fusion rifle for the King's Fall day one raid. The PvE damage output on this thing is absolutely wild, outperforming Reed's Regret and even potentially the Storm Chaser. You see, Typen can be crafted with triple tap firing line, but the kicker is the Viced Stinger origin trait. Between triple tap and Viced, the beauty of Typen is that you'll get so many shots back in the mag you borderline never need to reload. Sure, you can run out of ammo, but for time-gated damage phases, this gun is goaded. Again, you can go to the Enclave right now
now, do a two-part quest, and have the ability to craft your very own Typen for PvE. Do it now and never look back. Next up in the tier one is the Smite of Moraine, aka the King's Fall Pulse Rifle. I've actually got a solid roll on the Smite, and on paper, it shouldn't feel as good as it does. 17 zoom, average aim assist, fine base stats, and yet, I don't know. The sight looks really good, and it's shockingly accurate. It could be that the roll I brought into PvP has Eye of the Storm, which again, I really enjoy. I'd like to eventually craft a roll with either Eye of the Storm and Moving Target, or Moving Target and the all-new Gutshot. Remember earlier how I told you the raid weapons can break the mold of what weapons can usually roll with? Smite of Moraine has the ability to potentially drop with Focused Fury in Column 3 and One for All in Column 4. I should also point out that the weapon's origin trait will overflow the mag of your gun if you're just standing near an ally. I'm kinda shuddering right now, thinking of the damage output potential in PvE with Focused Fury and One for All together. That thing will blow through PvE enemies like a used Kleenex. Other fun combos include Focused Fury and Vorpal Weapon, Stats for All and One for All, Demolitionist and Junkie, and Pugilist and Swashbuckler. We're down to the final two, and next up, pretty sure I'm gonna botch the pronunciation, is Zauli's Bane? I'm gonna go ahead and call it the Z-Bane. Either way, it's the King's Fall Raid Hand Cannon, and yup, as you guessed, bunch of weird and wild perk combos available. A 140 RPM hand cannon, which is pretty much the meta right now in PvP, the Bane can drop with many a solid combo. For straight up 1v1 dueling in Crucible, you've got combos like Explosive Payload and Eye of the Storm, or Opening Shot and Eye of the Storm. The real reason I'm very curious about the Bane though and why I have it in my top most wanted tier, it's apparently the only hand cannon in the game capable of rolling with the all new gut shot straight perk. I've been fiddling with the numbers and with with gut shot, the Bane should be able to get a kill with two headshots and one body shot in the neutral game, meaning no kill required to get that level of damage output. Granted, you're going to trade off some aim assist, but hey, if you're accurate, you're going to be rewarded with one of the easiest hand cannon three taps in all of D2. I'll be seeing you in PvP with that roll, y'all. All right, my final gun in my top most wanted tier is, drum roll please, Touch of Malice. Shouldn't come as a shock that the raid drop exotic weapon is topping off my list of most wanted weapons in Season of Plunder. Touch of Malice is back, and according to early reports from content creators I know and love, like Cool Guy, this thing is a beast in D2. While it certainly can wreak havoc in PvP, it is a PvE damage dealing machine. Glad has been sharing clips on Twitter showing the new and improved destructive power of the Malice by pretty much nuking every raid boss using it. Granted, it's a full team of people using the gun, but come on, a team of people melting a raid boss with a primary weapon. That is complete insanity and I want in. You better bet your little behinds I'll be raiding every week on reset day until that thing is in my hands. There's a ton of good loot out there for the taking, but these are my top picks. Head down to the comment section right now and let me know what roles you're looking for the most and why. Got any of my god roles already? Make me jealous on Twitter, as is tradition. Subscribe to my channel if you're new and I I appreciate you. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on stream.